Hello, welcome to ArcPoint. My name is Marcus, and today we're going to be taking a look through Advanced Swords. Once you can do a sword and core, you can do any melee weapon. Because deep down, all of those advanced melee weapons, such as the hammer, knife, and axe, they all work the same way. First, we're going to explain the sword, and then we're going to make the sword. So, starting off, we're going to go to Core Content, and we're going to type in Sword. Duh. More specifically, this advanced two-handed sword. We're going to drag and drop that in, and we're going to press play to take a look-see. So, if we get close enough, we can press F to advance, equip it. Yes, advance equip it. And then we can see that I am holding it two-handed, and if we press the left mouse, wham! That is a sword in action. Now, if we do it twice, it hits, well, swipes from left to right. Pretty sure I have those the wrong way, but it'll be fine. And if there was a player in there, they would be getting sliced up. So, pressing escape, we're gonna take a look at the equipment. I'll take a closer look at the advanced sword. So you'll notice that it's an equipment because of this little bag icon here. That means it comes with all the basic equipment stuff and properties, such as the socket, which is where it will uh, attach to the player. In this case, it is the right prop, which is in the right hand. We can clear that field to take a look at all the other places we can attach to, such as the head, but generally we're going to want it in the right hand. Uh, there is a slot for the pickup trigger. Uh, since this is a template, we just dragged and dropped. It's already in there. And then there is a couple of custom properties, such as the stance. This is essentially the series of animations that the player will be holding the sword in. At the moment it is two-hand sword stance. I believe if we change this to a one, then suddenly we have it being held in just one hand. Cool. Cool. And then there is a play impact. This is the effect that appears once you hit someone else with a sword. And then there is also a sound. So opening up and taking a look further, we can see there's the pickup trigger. Um, pressing V will toggle on the visibility for gizmos, such as sounds, buttons, the spawns, usually invisible things. So this trigger box here, that is the pickup trigger. It is where you can also change the interaction label. So at the moment it is equip advanced sword. Uh, we can change that to equip advanced gun or whatever you want it to be. And then this is the main difference between the ranged weapons and the melee weapons. It is the hitbox trigger. So this massive circle. This is what actually damages the player. So if a player is inside of the circle and you attack, they'll get damaged. Uh, let me show this using networked preview mode. So it doesn't actually matter the size of the sword. What matters is that trigger box. Okay, picking up the sword, we can see that the hitbox follows the player, and not where the player is looking, but the actual facing direction of the player. And when you swing the sword, it doesn't change. This means that you'll have to adjust the hitbox sphere, uh, depending on the size and the type of the weapon and all of that. That's the main difference between all of those hammers, axes, and knives. Yep. And then we can see that there are two abilities underneath. Uh, this is for attacking left and then slashing right. There's also where you change the damage. So if you scroll to the bottom, you can see that there is a section for damage. And you can actually have different hitboxes if you wanted maybe two different sizes or something. And then there is the swing effect. That is essentially the trail that appears while the sword is being swung. 
Okay, ignoring that jump cat, we're going to open up Client Context and Geo. This is where all the geometry for the sword resides, such as the grip, the guard, the blade, all of that stuff. Pretty cool. And we're going to make sure that the position is zeroed out and the scale is all one. And we'll note that the pivot of the equipment is where the player is going to grip. We can actually see a representation of this by de-instancing the object, typing in guide, and then drag and drop a two-handed sword guide in. Suddenly we can see these two red hands, which is where the player will grip. Uh, one way to change this is by taking the geo and say we want to grip by the blade. Just drag and drop that down. I'll just drop it down. And then when I pick it up, I suddenly cannot feel my hands. Perfect. Now another thing is that you'll probably want to change out the effects and all that. Uh, you can find this under Project Content, and you can find the dependencies for the sword under My Templates. Not uh, shared content, imported content, or anything like that. It's under My Templates, and then you can just drag and drop that in. You can see that puff, poof, poof. That appears when you hit a, another player. You've got this half circle swing effect, which consists of a sword swipe. You can change things like the emissive color, boing, and the boost, because we didn't need to see anyway. And then there's pickup sounds and the sword of the swing. Sound. Sound of the swing. Yes. Uh, when you edit these, I'd suggest changing the name, beep boop bop, and then making a new template instead of updating the old template, because if you update the template, it's going to change the uh, effect for every single normal sword. Unless you plan on never using these ever in um. It's per project though, so it should be fine. So yeah, that's the basics of advanced weapons in Core. So now we're just going to take this Geo, boop, and we're just going to do a quick modification, make it a fine looking double-edged, double-bladed, sorry. And then... Just gonna modify this. Gonna change it to something fancy. Yeah, that'll be fine. We're gonna remove the weapon guide. And we're gonna see what we can do with uh, the abilities. So we got our left hand slash. But let's take a look at something maybe a bit more fancy. See how the spin goes. Ouch. <laughs> uh, we never changed back the uh, geometry. Back to its original position. So that's a pretty fancy spin but it's going to have an even fancier follow-up. So we're going to take a look here. Mm. Middle spin. Oh, one thing to note with uh, these fancier animations, usually with the combos, is that they actually have the player move uh, during his attack. So this is the basic, and you can see we didn't move a single bit. But with the uh, combinations, they have movement embedded into oh, the animation. Uh, as far as I'm aware, there's no way to turn that off. Uh, you can try and mitigate it, but generally it's not, not really worth it. Yeah, fancy fiery sword. Uh, additionally, as with most art, we can add effects. So we're just going to look for some good old fire. Mm. 
There we go, a fire volume. We're going to put that into our geo. And I'd call that a bit overkill. But honestly, it's kind of cool. Neat. So yeah, that was like uh, two minutes and we created, or well, we changed and modified the basic advanced sword into a cool double-bladed weapon. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you found it helpful. Uh, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to let me know in the comment section down below. Otherwise, I shall see you in the next video. Bye!